Hey guys, Haz here at Shield K9. I would like to introduce you to the Shield K9 R litter. As you know, we do breedings to supply ourselves with police dogs and protection dogs for our program, and also because we love the working German Shepherd. So I'm gonna introduce you to this litter. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pedigree, and then we're gonna test the puppies. So guys, as you can see, this litter is a litter of explorers. Sometimes you'll see a lot of the time with the puppies that they all kind of stick together. There's puppies everywhere. Exploratory behavior is a sign of confidence. I like puppies that are willing to explore the environment, not puppies that are too afraid to go out and venture forth. These puppies have never been in this yard. They don't know me, right? They were whelped off site and now they're here with us. You can see that they're nice and social. They're running, they're playing, they're smelling. They're exploring the environment. This is what we want to see. Now you can see here in this litter that there are a number of different colors. They're, they're making my pants a wonderful new color as well. These are all bicolors and dark sables. So really, really nice litter. You can see this female here. Look at this female. This female is beautiful. Look at the head on her. Now I know some of their ears have not come out yet. With German Shepherd puppies, don't worry. It's very common for the ears to take a few months to pop all the way up. And usually what you'll see with the German Shepherd puppies is the ears coming up and down. So what I'm gonna be doing today is, as I mentioned, this litter was whelped off site. It is now time for us to test the litter. Oh, we have a little bit of a puppy fight over there. <laughs> oh boy, everybody's coming in. Look at that one. That one's just out there exploring. Eh? Like, just doesn't give a shit. I'll tell you guys, one thing I really like about this litter already, and this is before I have even tested them, is I love how willing they are to explore. Usually the puppies are very unwilling to leave each other, and it's a sign of good confidence. You just see them already relaxing, lying around, not so much hectic behavior, playing with the trees, you know, smelling the ground. All very good things to see. I'm very happy with this. We have six males and two females in this litter, so definitely a male heavy litter, which is good because majority of people seem to want males these days for whatever reason. With testing puppies, we have to always realize this, okay? It is a moment in time. Puppies go through development. I've tested puppies that didn't test as, you know, superstars. They kind of were more in the middle range and then they ended up being the best in the litter. I've tested puppies that were superstars in the testing and ended up being more in the middle of the range when it comes to working quality. So what I'm looking for in the test is a couple of things. I'm looking to assess the puppy's working quality and I'm also looking to assess the sociability traits of the puppy and the default just confidence of the puppy. There are times when you don't want the most confident, outgoing, powerful puppy in the litter. There are times when you want that puppy that's more middle of the road or even bottom of the pecking order in terms of the litter. And I'm gonna to explain to you more why as we progress through this video. Okay guys, so we got the puppies in the boxes. I'm gonna drive them up in my side-by-side, -side, which is nice and noisy. We're gonna take them into our training building and we're going to test them from a working quality perspective and also from just like being a general family dog perspective. I'm gonna walk you through that testing, explain to you exactly what I'm looking at and how it may impact your dog's behavior and the type of dog that you end up with in the future. All right guys, so I'm quickly gonna jump into who the parents of this litter are. I could spend a long time on the pedigrees here, but I'm gonna try and keep this as brief as possible. The sire for this litter is Kratos, Vom Tapfer and Free Krieger. Can never uh, pronounce those names correctly. As you can see, we've got the health testing here, HD normal, ED normal. Um, you can see he's a sable male. I've actually met him in person. I'm gonna talk about my experience with the dog, what I've seen with the dog. He's, um, he's handled by my buddy Francis Cote. You know, really, really strong, dominant dog. Uh, let's get into the pedigree first though. So we've got Hop Hopper von Brackpedal is Kratos' father. Okay, so the grandfather of this litter that you're gonna see. And Hopper is a very well-known dog. He's actually out of the famous Boli Yanaka and Becky von der Schifloff. Um, and then these are very well-known dogs. So Hopper is a very well-known dog. He has many litters, many puppies. Um, you know, healthy dog, big dog, strong dog, drivey dog. Um, and then we've got uh, Milka von der Hunschart and for the females, you know, of course, in German Shepherds, females are less well-known. You can see she's a bicolor, so you see now where the bicolor is coming from on this side of the pedigree. And she's out of Eros von Tapfer and Krieger, who's out of uh, Zorro von der Mortzkau. Uh, again, you guys can check these litters out if you want. And then the mother line, Pandora, out of the famous Blackjack. So, you know, really uh, nice lines on the father's side. I'm gonna tell you, so like Boli, uh, carries a fair bit of aggression. Leon von der Staatsmacht from my friend Stefan. Um, you know, super, super dog. 
bred a lot of times. So you can see where the drive and the aggression that Kratos carries comes from. Um, Kratos is an extremely dominant male. Uh, he's very uh, high drive dog. Uh, he's very possessive, very strong, strong dog in protection. Uh, very difficult to handle, like not an easy dog to handle. And you know I like to breed the males that are like this, right? Like I like to breed with males that are very strong, very dominant. The males that aren't easy to handle. The males that are s too much really, to be honest with you. The males that are too much. These are my preference when it comes to breeding males. Let's talk about the mother line, okay? So we've got Roxy, okay? And Roxy is the mother of this litter, Roxy Von Dio Andico from my uh, friend uh, Guy Bertrand. Fantastic female, but I'm gonna tell you, you know, you can see she's a black female. So I, I actually, no, sorry, she's a bicolor female. So you can see again where the bicolor coloration comes from. And now this is Riley's pedigree, okay? So for the pedigree, you can see her father is Axel von Diendico. Axel was a mofo, okay? And Axel comes out of Tarzan von, Kitz von Kibitzende. I've had many dogs from Tarzan, and I've had several dogs from Axel. And this is why I really like Roxy's pedigree, because both of these dogs, and their, of course, their grandparents are famous, right? Um, produced mofos. Then Axel's mother, uh, Excel's mother, Mozaret Von Diendico. I've had puppies from her, also really good. But her father, Yukon Von Der Staatsmacht, again, from my friend Stefan. I don't even have words to describe what that dog was. Um, it was a lot of dog, okay? Then we've got Riley Von Diendico on the mother's side. Kenzo Von House Barkley. Kenzo was a famous dog in Ontario. Uh, really, really strong. Uh, he was a big bicolor male. I remember seeing him when he first arrived here. Um, he uh, he had extreme and like extreme drive, like Chico has. And uh, he uh, he did end up chewing up his handler uh, when the handler was being uh, rough with him over giving him the ball or something like that. And he's out of the famous Gucci Vom Esblock Van. As Black Hoff, again, bicolor. There's a lot of bicolors in these lines. And then the mother, Pina Von Diendico, again, Tarzan Kibitzendi. So you can see Tarzan appears two times in Roxy's pedigree. It's an inbreeding, it's a 3 2 on Tarzan. And Tarzan was a big dog, he was a strong dog. And again, look where we look at this Roget Von Diendico. We got Yukon Von der Staatsmacht. Yukon Von der Staatsmacht. So we've got a 3 4 on Yukon Von der Staatsmacht. So we have inbreedings on Yukon von der Staatsmacht and Tarzan von Kibitzende on, um, so it's a double inbreeding on Roxy's pedigree. And that means that Roxy is packing a lot of extreme drive and power. So this litter, uh, the mother line is extremely deep. And this is what I mean. This is why I, I, I released this female and had a litter with her because this is such a deep pedigree. If you know these dogs, you know the, the, the strength and the drive in these dogs, the dominance in these dogs. And then you mix that on the other side of the pedigree with Kratos. And man, this is a bonfire of, of a breeding. Okay, so jumping into Roxy's health testing. Uh, good hips. You can see she has an OFA good rating on the hips. And on the elbows, she is negative for elbow dysplasia, both on the left and the right side. So you can see that the health testing on both parents has been done. Um, and uh, very, very interesting breeding. I am very excited to see how these puppies turn out. We will be keeping a couple back for ourselves and our program. And uh, all the people that are on the list for the puppy are really good. I think enjoy these puppies. So you guys now are going to see me test the puppies. And again, please keep in mind, this is a moment in time. All right, guys. So I've decided today to do the testing in my office because I don't allow dogs really in my office. And these puppies have definitely never been in my office. I always like doing the testing in a completely new place that has different things environmentally that I can use to kind of see what the dog's default responses are. All right, guys, so it's time for our first puppy. There you go. This is a bicolor female. I already noticed her outside when they were in the field. She's very outgoing. She's already showing drive, biting my ankles. So that's something that I've already kind of mentally noted when I had them out. So I'm just gonna put her down and I'm gonna see what her default behavior is. You know, there's different surfaces. We have a cowhide, we have a floor here. And I just kind of want to see what's the dog's response, you know, to two different things. I'm very interested in the cowhide. Very interested in the cowhide. <laughs> so you can see she's kind of opening up. She's moving around. I'm going to move the chair around. You see how she responds to that big rolling object moving around. The other thing that I'm looking at too is like there's people in here, right? There's Dan, the camera guy. There's myself. There's Jessica. 
I want to see, like, what is her response to all these people she doesn't know moving around, right? She doesn't know any of us. For her, we're going to give her environmental a two out of three. She shows some caution, but she's also willing to overcome that caution and engage in the environment. I'm going to move her over here. I'm going to see what her interest is in food, okay, right now. Now, these puppies already ate. They are not hungry, and that's important for this. I don't want to see what the puppy is like when they're hungry. I want to see what the puppy is like when they're not hungry in a brand new place. That's going to tell me what the true food drive is like, right? Now, there's a little bit of interest, right? And you can see she's willing to eat. That's a good sign. She's willing to chase a little bit. That's a good sign. She's telling me, okay, now she's really biting it. And I'm using big kibbles here, so not little tiny kibbles, right? Hard. Oh, okay. Very nice. You can see already she's nipping me a little bit, trying to, to get it. And you can see there just the movement of the food is exciting for her. That's what we want to see. And you can see already the, the behavior opening up. For food drive, we're going to give her a three out of three. I like the food drive a lot. I like the engagement with the food. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out something that she hasn't seen, like a big box, you know, and I'm just going to move it around, and I want to see what her behavior is. There's a slight startle there, right? She's not fully running away. There's some caution. That's normal. So you can see that there's some caution there around the box, you know, the dog isn't you know, like super unwilling to go close to it. She is willing to check it out. She's not in complete avoidance, but there is definitely some caution around the box. The next part of the test that I'm going to run with her is some rough handling. A lot of people get upset about this, but I don't particularly care. For the rough handling, I'm going to make a little stress with my hands on the puppy. It's nothing she hasn't already felt from her mom and from other puppies. And I want to see what her default response is. Is it fight? Is it flight? Is it freeze? And that's going to tell me a little bit something about how she's going to work in the future, how she's going to accept pressure, both from the handler and from the environment in the future. For working dogs, it's so important to understand their ability to deal with stress is a very important facet in the breeding. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick her up and I'm going to put her upside down. You can see she's not got a problem with this. She's not extremely uh, anxious or worried about this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab her by the side and I'm going to pull and I'm going to release. Again, she doesn't seem particularly concerned. The next thing I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to grab by the scruff and just give a little shake, and I'm going to see what the behavior is. There was a little whining, but you can see she re-engages with me right away. She's not, partic <laughs> she's not particularly worried about that. So that's nice to see. For stress, we're going to give her a two out of three. She accepted it. She was willing to re-engage with me. So obviously, she whined a little bit when I grabbed the back of her neck. We're going to go into another room, and we're going to check the sociability. So when I open the door, I want to see what the response is, because this is now crossing a threshold into a new place, and we have a dog here. Ah, so I'm willing to go to the new dog right away, smell the new dog. Not particularly caring, like, to stay with him, but then willing to go back and engage with him. Okay, that's good. Interesting to see. For sociability, we're going to give her a three out of three. She didn't show too much concern there. There was a little bit initial concern with the dog, but then she went back to him uh, multiple times, and that's what we want to see. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the dog's interest in prey right now. She's already chasing it, and she's showing a high interest and desire to pick it up and to engage with the prey. Again, this is a piece of leather. This isn't a piece of burlap or a soft, squishy tug. That's on purpose for me because I'm seeing the real prey here. You know what I mean? It's not something that's easy for their little puppy teeth to bite. It's something that's a little bit less forgiving, and it requires the dog to really have drive to show interest at this age. Eight weeks, guys, is very, very young. This is good. You can see some possession. You can see that there is a genetic grip there. Again, no surprise considering the breeding. For prey, we're going to give her a three out of three, as you can see. Now, again, guys, with this, this is a moment in time. This puppy can change significantly as she grows. And again, like I said before, it's not uncommon that you see a superstar become more middle of the road and you see a more middle of the road puppy become a superstar. Again, this is pretty much in line with what I would expect from this litter, considering the parents. Oh, lucky me, I got the other female. We are going to check her chip. So we're just going to put the puppy down and we're going to see what her response is to being in a new environment. Doesn't seem to be particularly concerned by any of us walking around. They all really like the cow skin rug. <laughs> it must smell a little interesting for them. Close it, make a little noise. Pick up the box, drop it. I'm moving the box now, and she's just kind of over there investigating. I want to see what her response is. 
So you can see a little bit more startled than the last puppy. Now it's stopped moving. Let's see what she does. Nope, she's not going to it. Oh, no, don't. Don't ruin it. Okay. And what you see here now is that the puppy is seeking comfort with somebody. Environmentals, we're going to give her a one out of three. So she has some interest in the food drive. Obviously, she was a little more stressed by the box, so it could be impacting her desire for the food. I would say her, her food drive is more of a two out of three instead of a three out of three like the last puppy. You can see that this one sticks closer to me. She's looking for someone to kind of guide her. She's looking for someone to keep her safe. All right, so now she's coming into the new room. She has not seen Link, but she, she does react. She has not. Has she seen him? Now she sees him. Okay. <laughs> She doesn't seem too concerned, but she's definitely a little cautious. She does like the other puppy. You can see a little more hesitation. Link's being a little excited to see her. <laughs> Link's like, hey, I'm just friendly. Sociability, we are going to give her, let's say a 1.5. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick her up, hold her upside down. A little bit widening, but... Nothing too much here. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the side. I'm going to lift some whining. Okay. And then I'm going to grab the scruff and give a slight shake. Much the same response, a little bit more suppressed, but not, uh, you know, not completely unwilling to engage, not running away from me. Uh, we're going to give her a two out of three. Nice prey drive. You can see willing to grab it, willing to chase it, willing to carry it. Prey three out of three. Let's talk about what this puppy showed me versus the last puppy. This is a great opportunity to kind of take a break instead of just doing the same thing over and over again. Talk about what I'm seeing. Less confident at this time. Has the same prey drive. Maybe even a little bit more prey drive. I'm giving, just giving it a score out of three. Um, has similar food drive. A little bit more cautious about other dogs. A little bit more cautious in the environment. This dog is probably going to be compliant and she's probably going to look a lot more to the handler for direction if these traits continue as they are. Now, obviously, socialization, exposure, very important. You know, with a puppy like her, you can make it so she's not at all concerned about the environment. You know, you can make it so that she has a lot more confidence in the environment and a lot more confidence socially just by doing a ton of exposure. But the default for her is, I'm a little concerned, I go for the handler. That's good. That means this dog will be easy to control. This dog will be more likely. Everything I have to say is more likely. I'm making generalizations, okay? Nothing is for sure when we're doing this stuff. This dog is more likely to seek security and direction in the handler, especially when there's stress, especially when she's concerned or unsure of something. So this means this dog is more likely going to be easy to handle versus the other female might be a little bit more tough, a little bit more independent, okay? Big boy. He is heavy. Male sable. With German Shepherds, it's not at all uncommon that the males are larger, if not even significantly larger than the females, um, even when they come from the same litter. So just be aware of that. So we're going to put him down. We're going to see what his behavior is. Checking everything out. All right. And we're going to move the box. So you can see some avoidance, some, some like, whoa, what's that? Some insecurity there around the box. That's okay. The box test is difficult, guys. A lot of puppies are really like, what in the hell is that big giant thing moving on the ground, making noise? He doesn't show the same level of avoidance as the other puppy did. Um, he's not going to it, but he's still willing to engage with the environment, even though the box is moving. Environmentals, we give him 1.5. He's eating around the box that he was just a little bit worried about. That's actually important that I do that on purpose. So you can see there's some interest. It's not like as high, obviously, as that bicolor female that we brought in first. But he definitely is willing to eat and work around the food. It'll be a two out of three. On the back, doesn't care particularly. Then we're going to do our side grab. Minor concern there. We're going to grab the, the, uh, the scruff here. Give a little shake. You can see some submissive behavior, but you can see he recovers stress. Uh, we give him a two out of three. You can see he's actually, this is actually not uncommon to see that the dog can be a little bit interested, but also concerned slightly. Like, what is that? Right? Some dogs, their default behavior right away is to go to it. For him, you can see there's a little bit of caution. Prey, 
we give him a, a one. So he's an explorer. So no great. Su <laughs> I love how Link's like, whoa. <laughs> so you can see right there, very confident social behavior. <laughs> I really like to see how they are around strange dogs. And you can see like no hesitation, just went right for him. Now the dog's over him. So now he's going to have to see, we're going to see the behavior. Still being friendly. Now there's a little caution. He's like, oh, wow, you're bigger than I thought you were. <laughs> there's some play behavior there. <laughs> I'm also here providing security, so I'm going to move away. You can see just like with the other female, he goes to humans for some security. So that's telling you something. Social, we give him a two out of three. For a dog to be a good protection dog, right, for instance, the dog should notice some things. The dog should have some concern for some things. If the dog doesn't have some concern for things that are different, how are they going to be able to do their job? Notice when something's different. Notice when there's a different sound, a different smell, a different person. If the dog is super social with everybody, how is that dog going to be a good protection dog, right? Now, for some people, that might be a good protection dog. For others, it might not be. But it's something to keep in mind. A lot of dogs are on a spectrum when it comes to drive behavior, when it comes to social behavior, and when it, when it comes to environmental sureness. As long as we're not too far on the bottom end of the spectrum, there's always something, there's some utility that the dog can serve, whether it's as a family dog, a protection dog, a police dog, a sport dog. Okay, male bicolor. He's showing caution as he explores, but you can see he's also like, he's intense the way he moves and the way he explores. He's intensely like smelling. He hasn't even seen the box or acknowledge the box. There we go. He's exploring with intensity. Environmentals, he was a two. 0.5, actually, I like. Let's check the food drive. So he's willing to eat. Yes, right away, showing some interest to chase. Uh, he was a one. First thing we're going to do, check the flank here. So definitely that didn't, didn't like that so much. You're going to lift him here. Nothing. <clears throat> Fold him upside down. Nothing. And you can see he's got intensity. He's moving, you know, all of that stuff. That stress, what did the stress, how did the stress manifest? The stress manifested in movement. He's going, he wants to do something. He becomes intense. That tells me that when I make pressure in training, if I'm making pressure in training, it's going to make him more active. Uh, he was a 2.5 there. So now we have the prey. Right away, interest in the prey. Not a surprise. I figured out that you can use your mouth. Okay, now he's got it. Prey drive, he was a 2. Oh, there he is. He's like, oh, there's a dog here. <laughs> I love Lake. He acts like every puppy's like the first puppy he ever met. <laughs> he's more interested in kind of self-satisfying in the environment. You can see he's like a little bit more independent than a lot of the other puppies in the litter. He's like a little bit worried about this dog. So he's coming to me now looking for a little bit of security. Social, uh, he was a 2.5 as well. You can see a lot of similarities in this litter. Also some differences. For me, uh, right now, this dog is my pick of the litter from a working perspective. If someone says, look, has... I want a working dog for police. I want a working dog for IGP. This is my pick of the litter from a male, uh, from the male perspective. Um, I think he, he has that default active behavior that I would want to see in a working dog. Um, again, you're going to have to know how to handle them. And you can see he's a bit of an intense guy. You know, if you're not, if you don't know what you're doing, he can, this one will become a bit of a handful when he's grown. Now, if we raise him here at Shield and, and bring him up as one of our protection dogs, I'm sure he'll be an angel by the time he's 18 months old. But again, it will really heavily depend on who's raising the dog, who's training the dog, what they're doing. This is the kind of dog, like if you make a lot of pressure on him in training, and especially when he goes into a high level of arousal or drive, he probably will redirect on you. Um, this is the kind of dog that, you know, if you don't give him an outlet, he'll be grabbing everything and, you know, just terrorizing you for fun, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, he's a lot of dog already. I can see the behavior in him. His default behavior is to be a lot. All right, guys. So you've seen the puppies. You've seen the puppy testing. You heard me talk about the litter, why I did this breeding, why I wanted this litter. Um, but... I have to say a couple of things, really important stuff to understand. Personally, I don't buy puppies based on puppy testing. 
I buy puppies based on the pedigree, right? If I don't believe in the pedigree, if I don't believe in the breeding, I'm not buying puppies. You can see that with the pedigrees I've presented to you and with the dogs, the individuals that I presented to you, super strong pedigree and deep pedigree, multiple generations of dogs showing very strong drive behaviors, dominance, courage, power, all of that stuff, right? For this litter, I know that there's police dogs in this litter. I know there's sport dogs in this litter. And I know there's family dogs in this litter. A lot of people say, well, why don't you breed down? Why don't you breed like these sensitive, compliant, weak dogs? And the reason why is because when you breed the super strong dogs together, when you breed the dogs that have pedigrees that are packed with power for multiple generations, you will still get puppies in the litter that are more suitable for family environments. I know this because I have them all the time and I sell them all the time. So in conclusion, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, we take all puppy testing with a grain of salt. A lot of people on the list for this litter were asking me to test. There may be a couple of puppies available on this litter at the time that we're filming this. I don't know by the time you watch it if there will be any. Um, but if you're interested in a German Shepherd puppy, check us out. Give us a call. Send us an email and uh, we will be able to help you out. All right, guys, like, subscribe, comment below. Tell me the puppy you would pick. Put it down in the comments below. Check us out on Patreon. Link is below. Check out our online courses, shieldcanineonline.com. Puppy training, training adults, behavior training, protection training, sport training, and, and everything else. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.